video, we will attempt to give you a brief overview of corpus linguistics, what it is, where it comes from, and where it's headed. So, let's get started. We can say there are two main areas of language studies, traditional studies of structure and studies of language use. Corpus linguistics studies language use. It's the study of natural, authentic language. How, when, where, and for what purpose language is used by people worldwide. But... <laughs> what does this mean? Well, let's start from the beginning. The first thing we need to study language use is a corpus. But you ask, what's a corpus? At its most basic definition, it's a large principal collection of natural texts that can be used for linguistic analysis. Language studies based on corpus date back to the Middle Ages with Bible studies. But let's fast forward a little to more recent times. Before the computer age, language corpora were collected, stored, and analyzed manually. They were used mostly as description for language teaching, one of the most famous being Thorndike's work in 1921. He compiled a list of the 30,000 most frequent words in the English language from a corpus of 4.5 million words. A lot of subsequent work on vocabulary was done based on his studies. And everything was done manually. Wow, just take a moment to appreciate that. 4.5 million words. The survey of English usage was also a non-electronic corpus of spoken and written English, and it can be considered the basis of modern corpora. Randolph Quirk and his team started compiling it around 1953. It contained 200 texts, a fixed number, each containing the same amount of words, 5,000 words. It was organized in index cards, and each card contained a word surrounded by 17 lines of text. This amounted to 1 million index cards. Again, huge undertaking. The corpus became fully electronic only in 1989, and the spoken part became known as the London Lund Corpus. To this day, it's still used in language research. Despite Quirk's work, Corpus linguistics hit kind of a black hole in the 1950s, when generative linguistics came to the spotlight, and the amount of hard work it took to compile corpora was heavily criticized. However, from the mid-1960s on, the development of computer technology revolutionized language research, and the world, of course. In the 1960s, Mainframe computers were much more present in university research centers, more complex NLP tools became available, and storage capacity was growing at a fast pace. 1964 marks the year the first electronic corpus of written language was launched. The Brown University Standard Corpus of present-day American English contained a million words. Around the same time, in England, Sinclair started compiling the first electronic corpus of spoken language containing 220,000 words. It doesn't sound like a lot compared to electronic corpora nowadays, but this was at a time when texts had to be transferred to computers through punch cards, so this was a huge undertaking. The 1980s brought along not only an explosion of hair and pop culture, but also personal computers, and with them, the establishment of corpus linguistics is a legitimate field of language study. Modern computers allow corpus linguists to collect, store, process, and analyze huge amounts of data. Which brings us to modern corpus linguistics. And again... <laughs> what does this mean? As we've seen, Corpus Linguistics studies language use, so it's present pretty much everywhere. Where there's language being produced, chances are there's a corpus linguist there ready to collect it. It's in most major educational centers worldwide, and it's the basis of a huge number of studies in language description, linguistic theory, language teaching, language learning, translation, natural language processing, and on and on and on. So. 
If you want to find out more about corpus linguistics theory and application, check out our other videos.